What is going on guys? Gaston right here where we learn more and take our craft further and today we're gonna be Doing a simple overview of this lens because I just got it I saw a link on Amazon and it said two days delivery and I got it today I haven't even shot with the lens yet. So I have it right here. So I wanted to show you guys uh, Give you my first impression on this lens and let's start right now One of the first thing that you're gonna notice is that when you pick up this lens the lens feels a little bit heavy. Now the website claimed that it is 950 grams. And guess what, I have a scale right here. So we're gonna do it right now. Now we're gonna remove the caps and the lens weighs about exactly that, 954 grams. So it is not the heaviest lens, it is not the lightest lens, but I've been looking for a lens exactly like this one. Now, this lens reminds me a lot like the 24 to 70 millimeters from Sony, also G Master, and I have right here the 16 to 35. It is a little bit similar as well. Let me actually pop it in a 7R3 that I have right next to me. So you can see and we can compare this lens. So I have it right now. So as you guys can see, you know, lenses are pretty much the same in length. It looks like the uh, 135 is just a tiny bit bigger uh, than the 16 to 35. Now, why I've been looking for a lens like this? Well, first of all, my uh, largest uh, telephoto is 105. And the 105 is the one by Sigma. It is a 1.4, super heavy. Now, that lens is 3.5 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. Now this one comes up to 2.2 pounds when you do the conversion. Uh, nonetheless, not the heaviest, not the lightest. Now, I really like lenses to have a little bit of weight. Obviously, I don't like super heavy lenses because, you know, uh, they take it all in your arm. But a lens like this one, I think it has the perfect way because, you know, you're going to shoot at 135, you know, you're going to be zoomed in into your subject. So, you know, the additional weight gives you extra stability uh, for, your, for your shoots. One of the things that I like about this lens is that it has a lot of uh, customization around the body of the lens. The first thing that we're gonna see is that we have this uh, aperture ring. It goes from f1.8 to f22, and it also has an automatic mode. Um, as you guys can hear, you know, it clicks, but it has a switch that it allows you to de-click it, and now you have a smooth aperture control. I am not too keen about aperture rings because I like to shoot at the Studio F11 on the dot, and I'm not gonna change the aperture anymore. And a lot of the times, like for example, the 85 millimeter also has the same system, and I just happen to bump that all the time and change my exposure. Now, what else we have on the lens? We have two customizable buttons right here. Uh, we have an autofocus and manual focus switch. We have the full mode 0.7 to 2 and 1.5. We have also an 82 millimeters uh, filter thread. One of the things that I noticed when I was playing with the focus ring, it's a little bit kind of like not too smooth. You know, it feels like it's a little bit dry. Now, I really like the Sigma focus ring. Sigma actually, to me, has the smoothest, at least the Sigmas that I own, you know, the 105, you know, super smooth. With the G Master line, it seems like every time I get a G Master lens, it feels like this, and then after, you know, a few months of use, you know, the lens will actually feel smooth. But again, I think that uh, Sony could have actually gave us a little bit better here, especially when you're talking about a lens that costs $2,000. Talking about price, you know, when I got this lens, I paid around $2,000. Today, I actually checked on B&H Photo, and they have it for $1,898. So, if you want to save a few bucks, guys, go right now to B&H. Uh, it is actually for pre-order at the moment of this review. What else can I tell you about this lens? Well, I was actually taking a look at the specs, and this lens seems to be a winner. You know, I've been looking for a lens uh, larger than an 85 and 105 and the 135 is the lens that I've been wanting to get for a while for the sole purpose that I shoot mainly portraits and you know lately my work has become tighter and tighter around the face and with the 85 or the 105 I feel I have to come too close to the subject to really get the shots that I want so the 185 is gonna give me exactly what I'm looking for and uh, the 1.8, you know, is a plus. You're gonna be able to shoot with this lens and get plenty of light. You know, it's gonna be great for the outdoors and get uh, super nice bokeh. Now, when I shoot at the studio, you know, I like to lock, like I mentioned before, my aperture around 11 or 13. So uh, 1.8, 1.4, you know, it's not gonna matter to me at the studio. One of the other features that this lens has is that it has full weather sealing throughout the lens. So this is going to be an incredible outdoor lens. You know, if that's what you're into, you can get it really, really dirty and, uh, you know, you're gonna 
rest assured that the lens is gonna be safe. The website say that it's not 100% weather resistant, but it has some protection, which is better than nothing. It feels really good, you know, that's one of the things that I can tell you right now from having it in my hand just for a moment. It also feels really good in the camera. Also, this lens is claiming to have a new AR nano coating that is supposed to suppress and check this out, it's supposed to suppress chromatic aberration. So when I've heard suppress, you know, I think of non-existing. So that's one of the things that I'm gonna actually be testing the lens when I take it to the outdoors. And at the studio, we're gonna be checking for chromatic aberrations. If I can get a lens that shoots a 135, 1.8, uh, and no chromatic aberration, this could become my most favorite lens for most of my photography. The uh, construction of the uh, lens barrel is made out of a magnesium material. Uh, um, you know, that allows them to uh, make the lens a little bit lighter because, you know, if they would have used uh, heavier material, it would have been heavier because this lens has a lot of glass. You know, there's a lot of glass in here. So um, that's where the weight is coming from. Now, one of the things that is very impressive about this lens is that the minimal focus in this thing is about 27.5 inches. So, you know, remember, this is 135, and just to be able to focus on a distance like this much, I think it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty good. So this lens also has 11 aperture blade, which is going to give you incredible circular bokeh balls. Now, Sony claimed that the construction of this lens has a new optical design. So everything is supposed to be improved in this lens. Now, this lens has a four linear focusing motor, which is going to give you super snappy performance in out of focus, super good in tracking. It is also going to be low vibration and super silent. So guys, this was the first look to the new Sony 135mm f1.4. Now, who is this lens for? Well, I think this is going to be a lens for anyone looking for a medium range telephoto lens. You know, 135 f1.8 is gonna give you incredible amount of light. It's going to also give you incredible amount of bokeh. It has weather sealing, so it's gonna be great for the outdoors. So it is a pretty complete lens. Now, one of the things that I wanna be testing is the suppression of chromatic aberration. And this is the reason why there's gonna be a part two, which is going to be a comprehensive review of the real world this lens and I want to make sure that uh, this lens does suppress chromatic aberration. I'm going to take Sony's word and we're going to be showing you to you guys uh, most likely opening those images in Lightroom. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Drop your comment down below. Do you shoot with the 135? Are you planning to get this lens? Let me know. I'll see you guys very, very soon with an image review. Take care.